Hello, hello friends. Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome back to my face and my crafting space. And yeah, non-coffee themed cards again. This time I uh, had some fun making some little drinky poos and also made them into shakers, which uh, shaker cards are just fun. They're just fun. Um, I don't make them very often, but every time I do, I'm like, I really like these. <laughs> so anywho, uh, Picket Fence Studios released a whole bunch of drink themed shakers. I'm to show these on camera. There's so many. They released, these were part of, was it last month's release? I forget what day it is. Month, week, year, li literally, literally. Anyway, I'll link to all of them. I only used two. I made two different cards using two of the different ones. I used the tropical cocktail and the margarita, but there's like the tropical pineapple shaker. There's the, the whiskey drink shaker, which you could use for anything. You know, it's a, it's a basic glass shape, you know, and then there's like the craft beer one. Um, the lemonade, which is really cute. And then the martini. Like, they're just adorable. So, I did just a bunch of die cutting and ink pouncing, a little bit of Copic coloring, splattering, splattering, making of the shakers and all the fun things. So, just keep watching and I will show you guys how I assembled these cards. Oh, these are like vacations on a card. <laughs> Seriously. Oh, first off, holographic cardstock. Hello. Love how the light picked up on these, you know, really showing the hollow. I hoard this cardstock. I can't help it. It's so beautiful. Anyway, I did all my other die cutting first. I die cut many different pieces, which I'll get into in a minute, um, just from white cardstock. And then I took these shaker wafer dies. And like I said, I used the tropical cocktail and margarita. And there are two separate dies. There's the outline and then there's that inner portion that you can use to make it a shaker. So I used the outline on white cardstock. That'll be the base. And then I assembled the, um, the outline and then the inner portion with a little bit of tape. And I die cut it from the hollow cardstock to create my frame. And I did this with both pieces. And then after I die cut them, I'm going to start adding... Um, color to all of the diff different die cuts and I will link to all the the die cut um, sets that I used but did all my die cutting first and then I'm going to add color so this time I decided to use um, Concord Ninth inks I've I've been just slowly slowly introducing them into my like actual card making um, when they came out with new colors like I've used their little ink cubes when they first came out with those I forget when that was <laughs> years ago. Um, got those, loved them. And then they released like a whole bunch of new colors. And I was like, well, obviously this is meant to be like, I must own them. Like, do you need all the brands of ink and all the color? No, no, you don't. I don't. And actually this might shock some of you, but I don't own all the brands and all the colors. I would love to. Like, do I need them? No, I would love to. I literally have nowhere to put them anyway. <laughs> However, I find that the Concord Ninth, personally, um, I personally think they're a very similar formula to Simon Says Stamps Positively Saturated Inks. Whether they're like the same or similar, um, this is just me talking. I have no idea. The ink pads are the same, basically. It's that foam ink pad. They're, the Concord Ninth, just like the Simons, are very juicy. You need to be very, if you're actually stamping with them, very light-handed. Just barely tap these ink pads. I like them the best for doing things like this, ink blending, etc. And that's what I did. I used my picket fence pouncers. I just worked on scrap paper. Um, these little greenery pieces are from the uh, full front shaker die set, the 5x7 one. I've done a video on these and I'll link to it at the end of this one. I love these like sprigs. These sprigs, they just, they come in handy on so many things. So... Um, anyway, I will link to the specific colors I used too, but I use cranberry for the first drink, sprout for the second, and then for these greenery pieces, I started with clover and then I went in with evergreen using my pouncers and keeping the darker color kind of concentrated to like the centers of these. And 
Yeah. Like I said, I think they're they're a very similar formula. Like I do, I have noticed they, they smooth out just like the positively saturatings do that I've like raved about. I love how they will like kind of smooth out and dry back a bit and it just looks fabulous. And you'll see it especially here on these backgrounds. So these are the uh, scene building seashore A2 vertical cover plate. Um, die cut those also from just white cardstock. And then for this bottom portion, it's wheat ink from Concord and Ninth. And this one on this one went on funny, but also there's probably like ink on my pouncers. I don't one. I don't wash my my pouncers, my blending brushes. Pouncers you're not supposed to wash them. Um, the most you should do is like spritz a cloth, and then you can kind of like pounce it on the cloth. But even that, I don't even bother. I just pick up some ink with it, pounce it onto like scraps of paper, go on with my day. It's all good. Anywho. I did the wheat ink onto those like bottom portions and then this piece you could you could make it look like water you know like um the wave coming up on the shore it's the the the, op, the possibilities are kind of really open-ended with this one i decided to make it just darker so i used nutmeg ink for this one and then um left the one little strip it's going to be white you know the little like white foamy parts of the water and then this top corner piece I started with Oceanside which oh, chef's kiss beautiful color love <laughs> so added that and then um I go in with Peacock so the darker shade and again it just they just blend as they dry it love it you know you, it looks a little a little bit blotchy not bad but you know it looks a little bit blotchy but as the ink dries they're going to look great. So added those together. And then to um, assemble these, all I did, I just cut just some scraps of copy paper down to slightly smaller because these are A2 size, like this background when it's assembled. So it'll completely cover my card front. And I wanted it all together just to make my life a little easier versus like assembling it on my card front. So copy paper keeps from adding, you know, too much bulk and whatnot to my card. And these just fit together like a puzzle piece. It again is another one of those like silly little satisfying things that I love. So I just started at the top and then worked my way down and just used craft tacky glue to adhere all of these pieces to the copy paper. So started with that top and then and now as you see it coming together, it's like, oh, this makes sense. <laughs> I remember when I first got this wafer die and I was like, I don't. I don't understand what I'm looking at. And I was like, oh, oh, okay. I get it. Love it. Fun. So adhered the third piece and then the final piece. And then I've got my little like beach scene going. And of course, I'm going to repeat the process with the second panel. And after I've got all of these um, assembled onto their copy paper, I am, of course, going to go in with splatter. It especially is necessary because anytime I do anything with like that's supposed to be look like sand, it's got to have some splatter. It's got to have some texture. It's sand. So got those assembled. I'm going to put these in my splat box and I'm going to start off with um, just white gouache. So get my little my little palette out add a little bit of white gouache to that and then I'll add some water to it to thin it out and make it nice and and splatterable and then my little fan brush and I'm going to splatter these in the background I purposely kept like from adding like really big blotchy bits I wanted everything to be fine you know just just nice little splatters to give that little bit of texture so all over these backgrounds I was going to leave it here you know, because I was like, mm, when this dries, it'll look cute. It'll be good to go. But I can never leave well enough alone. And I don't regret it. I don't. <laughs> so added the white gouache first and then decided that I wanted to add um, more splatter to like the sand area, like with a different um, color instead of the white gouache. So I'm going to use that nutmeg ink, so that darker brown ink. And I'm just going to use, again, just some copy paper to kind of protect the water portion because I don't want to get a bunch of brown splatters on that. So I just mush the edge of the nutmeg ink pad onto my palette, added a bit of water, and same thing. Got it on my fan brush. And then I'm going to add um, this splatter. And this will dry, again, this will dry back as it dries and it won't be so dark and then it just it just looks like sand it's perfect 
So did that and then I'll repeat the process on the um, second card front. So got that in place, put my copy paper over the water there so I don't get, yeah, a bunch of brown splatters on the white and like blue areas. And then I wanted to add, of course, some more splatter to the water areas just to tie it all together. And because, like I said, because I can't leave well enough alone. So flip that around and same thing. Going to use the copy paper then to cover up the sand area so I don't get blue splatters where they're not wanted. I wiped off my um, palette and then I used the peacock ink. So the darker blue aqua color. Added a bit of water to that. My fan brush. And then I'm going to splatter all over this. And this I don't mind if a little bit um, gets on the that little white uh, portion. Although for the most part I managed to almost completely evade it. Which doesn't usually happen. But here and there a little bit got on. I, it's fine. It's fine. Perfection's overrated. And honestly it just doesn't matter. So splattered that. Got my copy paper. Protected the other portion of the card front. Added some more of that... Um, peacock color to the watery the watery portion of this background and then I just set those aside to completely dry so then um, with those shaker dies all of the sets have little like add-ons other than the beer one um, you know little like straws little citrus pieces etc etc and these again I just die cut them from white cardstock and I just use Copic markers to quickly color them in this all I say quickly, but this is sped up in editing. I don't color this quickly, but it was still pretty simple. Pretty simple coloring. So added my bit of like shading and whatnot to um, these little die cut pieces with my Copics. And then my standard go-to with anything, if I'm inlaying like little like die cut pieces, is I just put washi tape on the back. It just makes life easier to do it this way. And then I can just inlay those little tiny pieces, just pick them up with my embellishment wand, press them into place, and then done, you know, done. So I decided to make the, the straw, it's, it's got little green stripes because, you know, why not? Let's, let's have a little stripey straw with our drink. <laughs> so I added that. And then the two little citrus pieces, which those ones come in the, with the margarita one, of course. So same thing, just put washi tape on the back re-inlaid you know the one little piece that had decided to you know come out and then um, once I've got um, those adhered into place I quickly did coloring this one I did a little lighter combo of greens since um, because again, margarita hello um, yeah yeah just did it added the color it was simple and the, because they're die cut, it gives it that little extra something, you know, the little bit of dimension. And then my final bit of dimension is using my white gel pen. And I just kind of traced around the the little sections, you know, to give it that uh, pith part of the, the citrus, add a little highlight to the cherry, etc. A few little dots, just it just gives it that little little extra something. So did all of that. And then once those were complete... Um, I needed to make the window portion of these shakers and I've shown this in many different ways and 99% of the time if I'm doing any sort of like shaped shaker um, I usually will like trace the die with a sharpie etc hand cut it because it, it just depends on what I'm doing these shapes though are very simple so I was like I'm gonna attempt to die cut these and see what happens at the very least um, they'll impress enough that I can just follow with the scissors because that's the thing. A lot of times acetate does not want to cut, like trying to die cut acetate like this. Usually it's just like, yeah, nope. This die cut actually pretty well. These are Simon's lightweight acetate sheets. I also left the little, um, like tissue piece that goes between them in the packaging. Uh, you can also use a piece of copy paper that does help acetate to cut better. But yeah, these cut almost completely through other than like one tiny little spot. So that was kind of perfect and it saved me from having to like trace around basically like follow the lines with my scissors. So then I've got my little shaker windows and now it's time to actually make these into shakers. So again because these are shaped and no straight lines or anything like that I traced around the um, frame with just craft tacky glue to adhere the acetate to it. I've said this in other videos I don't like using liquid adhesives with like plastic packaging etc because it's just it can get 
everywhere if you're not careful. It annoys me. I prefer using like score tape, red line tape, etc. But, but using those types of tapes with um, shapes like this would take me forever, you know, because you're trying to get them around things, etc, etc. And I, I don't have the time for that. So just a little bit of glue, press down that little window. It was good to go. And then to make it an actual shaker, foam tape. I'm using my waffle flower foam tape because it is my favorite. This time I'm using the thicker foam tape. So it's got a little bit more space because I want to add, of course, all my little shaker bits. So I take the backing off the foam tape. That makes it nice and pliable so I can go all the way around. Super, super simple um, and create that well for the shaker bits there on the main portion here. And then I'll just add a bit of foam tape to the, the stem of the glass so that things aren't, um, you know, so everything is kept the same level. And then to fill this one, I'm using the strawberry daiquiri mix. Oh, wait, before I get to that, I decided to add, you can do it like this or you can add it after you've like sealed it up. That's what I do with the second one. But I added my little accoutrement to my shaker drink you know again when I was making these the whole time I was like man I wish I was on the beach right now with this drink in my hand <laughs> I had a pretend little vacation in my head as I was making this just like feel, pretending you know just feeling the sand in between my toes cold drink in my hand just great times man <laughs> anyway yes strawberry uh daiquiri shaker mix lerve these are really cute they have little like clay strawberries and little like just little bits in there so i've pretty much filled um this shaker with that added a little bit of glue to those pieces i stuck to the top and then pressed um the die cut that i had added the cranberry ink to to the back of this and that seals it all up and makes it a shaker you could leave it here it looks great everything's fine because I just, it bugged me. I took my scissors and I trimmed off the ink blend bits that stuck out past the foam tape. Yeah, I just, I, it, it had to come off. I, it, I didn't like that. So I just went along and just trimmed it off so that, yeah, it just kind of looks a little cleaner in my opinion. So this is also where it would be a little easier if you left off the, the little top bits until after everything was done and then just adhered them. But it was fine. Um, I just trimmed off all the little bits around the foam tape and then I just carefully trimmed off the little top piece in between the all the little die cut pieces. Um, you can't really tell on camera because I'm like holding it up to my face but yeah trimmed those off and then that finished off drink shaker number one and then I'm just repeating the process in basically the exact same way for the second one. So put glue on the back of the um, outline die cut pressed the acetate window into place and then it took my little strip of foam tape so that i can create the well for the shaker bits remove the backing from it so that i can just maneuver it around all these little um curvy edges so yeah manipulated it around there super super simple and then once i've got um the well created i'll end up doing the same thing putting foam tape down like the stem and on the bot very bottom of this glass here so that everything is just kept um, level and this time I trimmed off the bottom of that backing piece just makes my life easier and then to fill this one I used uh, a zesty zesty sequins and there's little like lime and lemon pieces in that one too which I was like these are the best <laughs> so yeah filled that one and then once I was got everything in place and made sure none of them were like sticking, you know, to the foam tape, etc. Popped the, the back into place. And then I did the same thing. I took my scissors and trimmed off the little bits that were um, past the foam tape, basically, just to make everything look cleaner. And then this one, I adhered the pieces afterwards. It just worked that way. So one of those little greenery um, pieces and then I decided to add the one one of the little lime wedges to the top and then when I finish the card I'm going to add the other one um, onto the card. So got the foam tape in place and then the two little pieces I just basically like again tape them with washi tape because you're not going to see this when it all gets glued down um, to the actual card then the glue will like hold everything in place. 
but yeah, held those in place with a little bit of washi tape. And then um, after I did all of that, my shakers are now assembled, ready to go. So now I just need to do my sentiments. And for the sentiments, um, I used the Make It Dirty clear set. It's a bunch of good sentiments in this one. And yeah, yeah, the islands are calling or maybe it's the rum. <laughs> So yeah, just fun little sentiments, but this is the one I chose. It's five o'clock somewhere, but who really cares? Truth. Um, black cardstock, anti-static powder tool. Had this in my little mini misty. Stamped the sentiment with clear embossing ink. Coated it with detail white embossing powder. Tapped off the excess. Then I'm going to melt this with my heat tool till everything is smooth and melted. And once everything um, is heat embossed, I'll use like my microfiber cloth. Sometimes I also use like a, one of my baby wipes that I have sitting here, you know, to clean stamps and wipe things down and wipe my hands down because I'm always getting ink on them. Um, I'll use that sometimes to, to remove the excess anti-static powder. So get that all wiped off. And then I used the coordinating wafer die set to die cut these sentiments. So once I've got those um, die cut, and while I still had my Misty and the sentiment set out, I put the um, insides of my cards. My cards are going to be top folding A2 white note cards. So put that in my Misty and I put another sentiment from that stamp set, line that up, and I'm going to stamp that with VersaFine Claire Nocturne Ink. And this one says, thank you for bringing sweetness into my life. I thought that one was just a cute little sentiment. And it was the same, like similar font to the one I used on the front. This one would work really nicely with the lemonade shaker like seriously you guys they're just so cute anyway stamp those with the verse fine claire nocturne ink onto the insides of both of these cards and then once those are done now it's time to start assembling my whole little like scene that i got going on here so i decided i wanted to add baker's twine i mentioned this in a recent video i'm just back on the baker's twine <laughs> baker's twine kick so it's like getting added to almost all my cards so Plus, it was just meant to be because I had this like light lime green one and then I've got a red, you know, red baker's twine. I was like, mm, perfect. So wrap that around the um, card front. Use my reverse tweezers to hold it in place so I can tie my little bow, do all my fiddling. And then once I was happy with it, trim off the excess. And then those other little um, greenery pieces that I had um, pounced all the ink onto earlier, um... I'm going to adhere a couple of those to these backgrounds because, again, you know, I'm thinking like kind of palm fronds, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So adhere those to the background with craft tacky glue. And then um, I adhered one and then decided to adhere another one kind of in the lower corner as well. Just stuck it right on top of the, of the baker's twine. So got those adhered into place. Figured out how I was going to place like the drink and my sentiment, etc. So got those adhered. And then once I've got my greenery adhered, I can pop my um, shaker drink into place. So peel off the backing on the foam tape. And then this is where I add the glue to make sure all those little bits and pieces are just going to stay adhered. And then get that into place. And then to adhere the sentiment, I'm going to put foam tape on either side of the sentiment so that it can be held up. And I do the same thing with this little lime wedge too. I just put a little, little tiny square of foam tape on the one like corner of it and then a little bit of liquid glue and then adhere that and again look how the light is like I'm like getting distracted by my own video look how the light's reflecting on that holographic cardstock <laughs> anyway foam tape on either side of the sentiment because same thing it's going to be kind of popped up over the um shaker element which is again popped up with foam tape so put the bits of foam tape just on either side of this, leaving the center area clear so it fits over top of the shaker element. And then I do the exact same thing on the second card front. Didn't bother filming that because it literally exact same process. Don't need to see it twice. So did that, flipped the card front over so I could trim off all these little bits that were hanging off the edge. So it evens everything out. And then on the inside of the cards, I had one last like greenery piece left over because I wanted to add something more. So I figured out how I wanted to place this and just cut it in half, basically. So I could put one little piece, you know, on the bottom and then I'll put another little piece on the top while still leaving enough room, you know, to write something onto the inside of the card. So I adhered that with craft tacky glue. 
And then once that's adhered, same thing. Flip this over and then just trim off the excess that's hanging off the edges with my scissors. And then I'll do the exact same thing to the second card. So that's done. Fold this over. Um, reinforce that with my bone folder and then I'm going to adhere this card front to the card base with craft tacky glue and I always start at like kind of one of the top corners when I'm completely covering a card just and that's also why I use liquid glue because it gives me those few seconds you know to move things around line things up and we're good to go so that finished off these cards they were super fun to make I just, and the holographic cardstock and the shaker bits and just everything, like, how fun. <laughs> I had a blast making them. Hopefully, sometime in the future, nearish future, I'll actually get to be, like, sitting on a beach with a drink. Who knows? I got so many kids that vacations are just a pipe dream. But anywho, anywho, as always, I will have a link below the video to my blog post. In the blog post, it'll be pictures of the cards, picture links to all the supplies. Pretty easy to navigate, so you can check that out below if you're interested. I will also link to all the supplies in the description box below the video, so you can check that out if you want to. Thank you all so very much for taking the time to watch my videos, for thumbs upping and commenting. Subscribe if you haven't. I'd love to have you, and I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye!